Well, good evening, friends. It is Wednesday, March 17th, 2021. My name is Dan Kaufman, and I serve as Director for Discipleship and Assimilation here at Harris Chapel. And if you've been following along this year with us, this 2021 year with us, you know we've been talking all things discipleship. And so we just wrapped up a very long study in, uh, I guess, the first part of this study in being disciples, which in terms helps us make disciples, right? So we're going to take what we've been talking about the last nine weeks, take from being a disciple, what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus, and step into making disciples. And that's where we're going to be the next several weeks. So we're going to be having a new format uh, each week. Uh, It's going to be exciting. We're going to have a lot of people come on, uh, give some personal testimonies, share some personal stories about discipleship in their life, Uh, home groups, discipleship groups, life groups, all of those things. And I'm so excited to share those with you. So uh, this next, uh, for the foreseeable future anyway, for the next several weeks, we are going to call this Talk With Me Wednesday, and we are going to continue our talk on discipleship. And so the, the, the change here is going from this idea of just being a disciple of Jesus, but now we are a disciple of Jesus and we are making disciples of Jesus. All right. Are you with me? All right. Let's hop into it. And so as we've been talking about each week, this idea of being a disciple, we learned, you know, what it was like when Jesus called the disciples. We learned what Jesus expects from his disciples. We learned what Jesus taught his disciples, what he commanded his disciples. And one of the greatest things, and we, and, and you're probably, if you've been following along the last nine weeks, you're thinking, Dan, how have we not talked about the Great Commission? Well, I told you it was coming, and that's where we're going to start tonight. But as you can see on your slide here, on your screen here, there are several passages that we're going to talk about the next several weeks. And each of these passages talks about, one, our commission to go and make disciples, to go and preach the gospel, to go out into the nations, to go. And then also it talks about the help that the disciples had. You see, up to this point, the disciples had uh, just Jesus teaching them. They had the examples that they saw in Jesus. They had all of the authority that Jesus gave them. We're going to talk about authority again tonight, but they had Jesus is what they had. Well, we have Jesus through the gifting of the Holy Spirit, and that's what we're going to read about tonight. We're going to be in Matthew 28, so if you have your Bibles, go ahead and flip over there. And again, even though this the next several weeks are going to look a little different, and actually next week we may not have slides, um, it, we've got a great video for you, but I want to encourage you to have your journal have your phone, have a scrap piece of paper, have a pen and paper ready, because just as we did the last several weeks where we had applications to apply to our lives, this study is also going to have application questions, uh, thoughts, ideas for us to apply to our lives as well. So, so continue to write through this, continue to, to save your answers, your responses, your questions, whatever the Spirit's laying on your heart, continue to jot that down, because trust me, After this year, after this study that we're doing, you're going to want to go back and visit this stuff time and time again. I know I've already went back and visited the last nine weeks several times, and each time God has just given me something new. So this week we're in Matthew 28, and then as you can see on your slide, that may not be the order that we're going to follow, but we're going to be in all four Gospels as well as the book of Acts in the next several weeks. And we're going to be talking again about that commission that Jesus gives us, but also the gifting of the leading of the Holy Spirit to help us in this in this discipleship process. All right, so if you don't have your Bibles, you can follow along with me here on the screen. We're in Matthew 28, 16 through 20, and this is the Great Commission, right? This is one of those things that, that, that most Christians could tell you the gist of or could at least tell you kind of what it's about. And so I want to read this to you, and then we're going to kind of break down some thoughts that maybe you haven't had about this. You know, a lot of times the, the verse that's always highlighted is 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But we really need this entire passage to see what Jesus is saying for his disciples to do. All right? So starting at verse 16, it says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. Amen. 
And so we're going to break this down real quick. And, and, and each of these videos is going to be a little shorter than our previous study. Um, and, and, and I'm excited about that because I really want you to chew on the things that we're putting forward, the things that we're going to be talking about. And so this is our application slide for this particular passage, all right? And so I want to break these down for you and talk about these. As we just read that, and like I said, if, you, if you're a Christian, if you've been following Jesus for quite some time, it's probably a passage that you're extremely familiar with. But I hope that I hope that God lays something on your heart a little new tonight. And so the first thing that I want to highlight is that the disciples are to be obedient, even in the moments of doubt. You know, if you go back to the beginning there, verses 16 and 17, it says when they saw Jesus, they worshiped him, even though some doubted. So they were in this act of worship and this act of obedience to, the, to, to Jesus, to their Lord. Uh, to, to the one who had been discipling them, to the Messiah, because you go back all the way to what we had talked about a few weeks ago. They, Peter, the chief spokesman for the disciple, had uh, acknowledged that Jesus was the Christ of God. And so the disciples are aware of this. So they saw him. They started worshiping. So this is after Jesus has been crucified. I'll give you a little bit of context here if, if you are new uh, to, this, to this study for us. Jesus has already been crucified. He has come back. And this is why there's some doubt, right? The disciples are like, hey, I saw him die, you know, all this stuff. So that is why there was some doubt there. But still, in an act of obedience, they worshiped him. And in that same thought of obedience, if you hop down to verse 20, the very last verse there, we talk about where it says, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. So in the fact of us teaching other disciples and the fact of us raising up other disciples, we are being obedient to Jesus from what he commanded us. And we are to teach that through example to other disciples. So in this process of disciple making or discipleship, we are being obedient. And those that are being discipled are learning about that obedience. Isn't that cool how that connects right there? The next thing I want to highlight is all authority has been given to Jesus. Amen. Amen. All authority has been given to Jesus. And so this idea goes all the way back to our study when we started in Luke chapter 9. If you remember that, it starts at verse 1, where Jesus says that he gives the disciples the authority in his name to go out and drive out demons, to, to cure diseases, to heal the sick, and do all these wonders and works in his name and in his authority. So Jesus has already established that authority. In fact, he gave them the authority to go out and do those works already. And now he's saying, because of that authority, because of who I am, you are to go. You can't stay still. You can't keep this truth about me. You have to go into all the nations and tell everyone about what I have done. You have to go and make disciples. So this idea, this authority that Jesus has here is trickling down to the disciples to go, to go. There's no, there's no option to be stagnant. There's no option to sit still. They are to be active. Discipleship is an active thing, and they are to go. And that goes into our next bullet point there. So therefore, go. Therefore means that there was something there before that we needed to pay attention to. That was the authority. Jesus is saying, I have the authority to tell you to do this. I've already given you the authority to go out and do these works. Therefore, continue to go. And then the last thing I want to highlight for you is we aren't alone. In that ver last verse, it ends with, surely he will be with us until the end of the age. Jesus says, surely he will be with us. And that is a lead in for us for the next several weeks when we talk about the leading of the Holy Spirit, right? If you go back to verse 19, when Jesus talks about baptizing in the name of the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we've got the, the, the idea of the Trinity there coming in. And now we know that we are going to be gifted the Holy Spirit to help us in this discipleship process. Amen. Because again, this isn't something that we could do on our own. I don't care how great of a person you are, but you don't have the authority alone. The authority comes from Jesus. And then the help that we have, the leading that we have in this discipleship process comes from the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I want to ask you a couple questions, and this is where you need your notebook for. Are you obedient even in your moments of doubt? Even in those moments of life where things start to, to get a little hairy, things start to get a little tricky, and it's not going as you thought, or maybe you thought you knew something and it turned out to be another thing. Remember, it said that the, that the disciples, that we knew the disciples had watched Jesus be crucified and they still worshiped him, even though some of them doubted, right? Are we obedient in our worship to God? Are we obedient in this discipleship thing just as he commanded us to do? 
Are we obedient even when we've got some doubts that maybe some things aren't going the way that we think they should be? That's what we're called to do. We're called to be obedient in this process. The next question I want to ask you is, with the authority of Jesus, are you going? Remember, I said it's an active thing. Are you going into your community and making disciples? And to all nations is what, is, is what the scripture says. So I want to ask you, are you just going into your community and preaching the gospel? Next question is, do you believe, and those are, those are three hard words, do you believe that Jesus is with us on this mission through the gifting of the Holy Spirit? Again, this isn't something we can do on, on our own. I don't, again, I don't care how great you are. I don't care how much biblical knowledge you have. I don't, I don't care about any of that. You can't make disciples without Jesus. And we have Jesus through the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And we're going to continue to do this each week because otherwise, I, you know, the stuff I'm talking about, it, it, would, it wouldn't matter. If you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, I would like to invite you to step into a personal walk with Jesus tonight. And if you're saying, you know what, Dan, I, I've been a Christian my whole life. I've been walking with Jesus my whole life. Um, but I'm not, I'm not obeying or I'm not living in obedience in this discipleship making process like I should be. I'd encourage you to say these words with me. I'd encourage you to say, you know what? I am completely surrendered. I am completely obedient to this process. I want to be known as a disciple of Jesus, and I want to make disciples in his name, in his authority. Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness for my sins. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my old life and invite you to come into my life, to be the Lord of my life. I want to trust and follow you as my Savior. Father, thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are and that you hear us and that you help us. Thank you for stepping into battle with death for us. And Jesus, right now, I, I, I pray that just that these words that we talked about tonight, Lord, with a, a very, very well-known passage, that maybe something new stuck out to us tonight. As we're starting this new process, this new, this new journey in our discipleship journey, Lord, as we're focusing on making disciples now, not just being a disciple, but making disciples as you commanded us to do. Lord, I pray that you make your disciples bold in this process. I pray that you make us obedient in this process, Lord. And I pray this in the authority, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And then I want to invite you guys next week. So I told you that we're going to have a couple changes here. So next week, you got to tune in. You're going to get to meet my good friend, Jacob Sewell, and we're going to talk about discipleship and home groups. And he is going to be talking about kind of his testimony, how he came to church here, how he's got tied in, and what discipleship and home groups have done in, in his life as well as his wife's life. And uh, I am so excited about that conversation. I can't wait to share that with you next week. And then also we're going to start in Mark chapter 16. So if you want to get you a little bit of a, a reading ahead of time, go ahead and hop in there, Mark 16, 14 through 18. And again, next several weeks, we're going to be talking about this commission to make disciples, but also the best part is we're not alone. We're not alone. All right. And if you guys want to invite your friends, I would encourage you to invite your friends to these next several weeks of study. It's going to be a great study. There's going to be application stuff at the end of each video. So things that we can directly apply to our lives today. You watching, you can apply this to your life today. We're going to have that at the end of each video. So go ahead and share this with your friends. Uh, let them know. Facebook, 630. YouTube, 630. Every Wednesday night. And then here on, on campus at, at Harris Chapel, Pastor Jim's going to have a great word for us this Sunday morning, 1015 a.m. See you then.